TruthBeToldPod.com, we are in our 21st show and it is rolling along. Pretty soon we are going to be celebrating that uh, bicentennial show. I guess we got a few more, but it just felt good to say it. Uh, before I get off task, let me introduce the players. Our uh, resident sit-in, our Rosa Parks, uh, Mr. Vinny <laughs> Fernandez. Uh, hey, how y'all doing? Um, I don't know why I got to be the black woman in front of the bus, but you know, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> and next up, our, our local health genius, our uh, man who keeps all of your bodies in check and is checking up on that Wolf's Challenge. Ladies and gentlemen, Wolf Griffin. From Strong Island, where they're known for the ducks. Good day, everyone. Continue to eat well, avoid the ducks, and take care of yourselves. Have you ever ate duck? Absolutely not. Duck but I would is, love to. It's good, actually. Oh, I'm, I'm sure they're it's actually good. Sure you get it roasted good. in that little window. Anyway, <laughs> and last but not least, the man of the hour. Some call him the Gray Beard. We call him the Puerto Rican Deacon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Luis. Fernandez. Same as it ever was. <laughs> That's the gray beard, baby. He don't gotta say much, but it means something. Same as it ever was. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank you for this show. We'd like to thank you for our 756 comments and you watching our shows. We're almost to a thousand and we're hoping that a couple months from now we can be at 10,000. Because our original goal is a thousand. We're, uh, what, about 254 views away. We appreciate all of you. Keep leaving the comments. Keep letting us know. We still want to hear everything you got to know. Even if you got a comment about the first show, we will answer it. If you're, if you're new to the show, welcome. We are Real Talk for Real People, giving a voice to the voiceless. And we'd like to welcome you guys. Today we're going to get a little eerie on you. We're going to talk about a topic that's not readily brought up. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, ghosts and hauntings and goblins and wiccans and witches and vampires. What's a wicked? You don't know what a Wiccan is? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> a Wiccan is a male witch. A Wiccan is actually sexual religion. Oh, excuse me. Considered. They don't consider religion today, but it's technically the oldest religion. But the, I always thought a, a wizard was the opposite. A, 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 war, a warlock. Oh, okay. Warlock, I mean. Well, it starts with a W. We got that. <laughs> w Wiccan is a form of religion. And your name is Wolf. Wiccan, witch, warlock. Wolf. That's not even going to happen. Wiccan basically believes in a god and goddess, and then both being good and evil within the two of them, celebrating different phases of the moon, especially a very spiritual religion, spiritual as far as the earth. Okay. Almost, not the same thing, almost similar to the age of Indians, kind of like. Okay. We learn something new every day. So, Wolf, uh, start us out, man. You had a very, very interesting topic and a very, very way to kind of pop this show off. Give us, give us your story, man. It was interesting because I was actually listening, listening to the radio. Out of the blue, I heard this discussion about this couple actually getting their money back from what they retail real, real, real or whatever, who sold, who sold them their house. Okay. They were actually able to get their money back because the house was haunted. Now, that immediately caught my attention because this particular case went all the way to the courts. The courts actually came down to make the decision to deem the horse the house the house being haunted. Mm. And now, how did they? How did they do that? How did they come to that conclusion? How can you deem a house haunted? What is the process? Like you have to call in like Ghostbusters? Or? <laughs> that that was my original thought as well. <laughs> as far as I digged, I couldn't find how that was done. Mm. But I found little bits and pieces of things, and to this day, that basically law stands. You can, if you buy a house and it's haunted, and you can prove it. I think like that would be expensive, but I guess if a house like has a history of hauntings or people, you know, running up out of there or dying, I guess that would have some validity to it. But still, I would, I would, I would be leery about that. Like when you get in the house of praise and you're going to check it out, and they're like, "Hey, what's down in the basement?" Oh, don't worry about that. <laughs> it's unfinished. Well, that's actually amazing. You said that. That's actually part of it. That's actually it. Really? It goes under the clause that's already under when people sell houses. Uh, unfortunately, I apologize. I lost my notes on the 80 mile an hour drive I did here. Mm. Um, blew right out the window. No tickets, man. No. But um, it goes under the uh, 
ethics, kind of ethic, ethics clause when you, when you sell a house. Basically, you have to be honest about what happened inside the house. Mm. Now, it's a, it's a very... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no. You were about to say something. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were about to keep talking. Go ahead. Oh, that was it. Just haunting me. Okay. Now, I was going to ask you, it's a very, very popular house on um, Strong Island, correct? Yeah, I never. Now, have you been there? I've never been inside there, but I've thrown a few rocks at it. You've thrown a few rocks at it. In true uh, uh, P-boy fashion. You didn't go in, man? I would have wanted to go in, man. What's a P-boy? P-boy, uh, a weak link. Somebody scared, you know, because I was always the kid that wasn't afraid of anything. I'd be like, man, I'm going in. Now, y'all probably never see me again. <laughs> I'd have went out the hardest cat in the world, though. You're the black guy in the movie that yeah. always dies first. Yep. No. That, that would be me, yeah. absolutely. People live in there. Really? Yeah. I thought it was like, like a museum at this point, or like a landmark. No, it's still a private residence. Who lives there? <laughs> they go to your school? No, that that was a little, little, little ways from my school. I was in the Bay Shore. Okay. I mean, it wasn't that far away, but it's out there. Is it in a, is it in a, is it in the city of Amityville or is it another city? It's in Amityville. Oh, well, you know I'm not from. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, <laughs> so I'm, I'm sorry. So I know I might pass as a New Yorker's son, but uh, I'm from the crib, baby. Stop. You you you'd be you'd be fine if you. <laughs> you'd be fine. Just <laughs> avoid the ducks. Uh, avoid the ducks. But, so give me give it give it for people that don't know the history on that house. Oh, I was prepared for that question. Basically. <laughs> well, basically, if I remember correctly, it was a man who basically, as they said, went crazy in there. Uh huh. So his whole family. Yep. I mean, I seen the old movie and the new movie, and that's pretty much how it went. Cause they had Ryan Reynolds in the new one. Yeah. Yeah. He did all right. But yeah, just to think of that, I mean, that could have been anything these days. Could have been bath salts. Could have been a. <laughs> Oh man, but I mean, I, I'm a big fan of horror and uh, things of that nature. Now, as far as uh, personal experiences, it's kind of hard to gauge because I've had some weird experiences and I don't know what to quite label them as. What about what about you, man? You ever had any anybody uh, levitate you or push you up on the ceiling and you wake up crying? Or Paranormal activities. Right. Days. Anything anything of that nature? Give give the people some insight on Wolf. Well, honestly, that is why. After I heard that show, I felt it was a good idea to bring up all kinds of things came to mind. Yes, I have dabbled in all kinds of things like that. Okay. Well, give us something, man. It's truth be told, yeah. baby. Tell the people. Well, you know, I'm trying to line it up nicely. Okay. But anyway, Sometimes yes, it can't be um, nice, man. Well, for the, <laughs> I'm for messing for the with show you, purposes. I'm messing with you, man. All right. Well, basically, I have never... Nothing's really happened to me, but I know I've seen things done. I've in my school in Bay Shore. Um, I'm not sure which grade I was in. Would be middle school, or high school. I'm gonna say middle school. People did the whole Bloody Mary thing. Uh -huh. Now I've heard different ways of doing it. You spin around a certain amount of time, say the name. Three times, wasn't it? Three times. I heard it was three up here, six or seven. Almost. Okay, I thought it was three. I know we used to do it in church. We would dare people to go in the bathroom at church and do Bloody Mary three times with the lights out and then look in the mirror. Good question. Now, when they, when they, do they turn off the lights and look in the mirror? Yeah. They turn, you have to go in there in the dark. Yes. And you have to spin around and say, Bloody Mary, Bloody Mary, and on the third Bloody Mary, she's supposed to appear. Did they put water on the window on the mirror? No. What's she supposed to do? Okay, well, give, give it to us, man. I, you know, I'm from Michigan, baby. We got different rules. <laughs> uh, we, we broke it down to the cheap version. She gets around state to state. Okay. But she's a busy woman, so she's like Santa Claus. Well, she's all <laughs> she moves quicker than Santa Claus. She has the option of the mirrors. Yeah. But so, I mean, she always has to come through the mirror, correct? Supposedly. I've seen people run out of the bathroom screaming. And it, it was serious because mm -hmm. school security had to hold them down. Screaming, mm -hmm. just going crazy. Oh my God, oh my God. So it was a Bloody Mary. I looked in the Bloody Mary a lot. Now, there were a lot of, I'll say, ideas of what they could be seeing. When you throw water on the mirror, it could be, yeah, you have a distorted image right. of yourself you're seeing. Right. 
and it, and it's slightly dark with the water kind of going downwards. Right. The distorted image couldn't seem almost like it's moving. Right. Well, it's almost like just the fear and anticipation in your mind builds up exactly. this image that's really you. Because, yeah, I never heard the water thing, but that would add a, a nice effect. Did, did, you, did you ever do it? No. <laughs> Come on, wolf. Did you ever dance on the grave? In the pale moonlight? What? Sunlight, yes. Sunlight? No, no, you gotta do it at night, man. What about oh, we you? had a curfew. We had a curfew? <laughs> See, I mean, we had the street light rule, man, but street light rule. you could get around that. There were ways. <laughs> See, when you want to get around a streetlight rule, you just spend the night at one of your friends' house. Everybody told their, their parents they were staying at this one friend's house. Their parents were out of town. And then you'd be good. I'm staying down the street at Jeff's. Oh, okay. Tell Jeff's mama I said hi. Okay. You'd be good. You'd be on your little bike. You'd be the man for the night. But what about you, Vinny? What, what kind of experiences have you had? Well, uh, Besides I, the girls chasing. <laughs> well, I can't say that I've ever dabbled in the, the dark arts or anything. Most of my experience with ghouls and goblins and, and creepy stuff like that probably come from horror movies. But uh, I did—I have heard of the Bloody Mary. You know, um, I've never seen anybody do it. I've never tried it myself. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, maybe it's something that I can give a run at. It sounds like something you, <laughs> something funny to do. Right, like, we're older now. Yeah, you know, it might not be as scary. Uh, but I—I I, I have felt that I've had a, a chance to to feel people from the other side, though. You know. Okay. Uh, you know, in our family, you know, we usually have a strong, well, I know my dad, he has a nice understanding of, you know, what happens on the other side, and maybe not ghosts, but, you know, spirit, right. spiritual things right. like that. Uh, you know, I've had dreams, mm -hmm. weird dreams. Like, they've been so real that you wake up scared. Yeah, I wake up scared. Like, I, I don't want to, you know, put y'all in one of my dreams, but I've had a scenario in my dream. Tell it to us, man. I'm going to put some good music behind it. <laughs> I mean, this dream... It, it's gonna sound crazy, you know. Right. But I'm saying, I woke up thinking it was real. Okay. Uh, it was a dream. Um, I remember it. It was a, a while back. Uh, I, I was in an area, you know, watching the news. I was with my, my family and everything, watching the news. Mm -hmm. And um, we were watching TV. And this is right around the time Obama got big, you know. <laughs> right around the time Obama got big. So I'm but this is somewhere recent. Like yeah, this is somewhere recent. <laughs> I, I'm watching. I'm watching the news with my family and. Breaking news, you know, breaking news comes up. Right. And Obama has been killed. So it happens and I'm 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 sitting there like, oh oh my gosh, you know, this is terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, and like and then I go through the process of what happens afterwards. And mm -hmm. I, I mean I go to the funeral of Obama mm -hmm. and they mummify Barack Obama. They mummify they mummify Barack Hussein they put, Obama. They put him in a I mean a, a sarcophagus. They put them in a what sarcophagus. Is that? It's a uh, it's an Egyptian an Egyptian tomb basically okay. where they where they put the the mummies in. Okay. You know, like the gold. I just didn't know the technical term. Yeah, it's a okay. sarcophagus. Okay. Uh, they put them in a sarcophagus and then Oprah came up and started speaking about. Uh, well, that's pretty scary. <laughs> Oprah came up and, and started, started speaking, speaking about Obama and his death, and I woke up and I was afraid because I literally thought Obama was dead and Oprah was on TV talking like it. It's, it's, it's weird, you know, and I saw a lot of people mm -hmm. in the dream who I've never met, mm -hmm. but they were speaking to me like I was their best friend, you know, like I had I had somebody with me, an older man, you know, like, uh, sometimes I really think if it was my grandfather, it was my father's father, Okay. but I don't know, Right. I just saw an older man, older black man, mm -hmm. who was always talking to me during, during throughout the thing, like, right. oh, this is terrible, you know, we got to do something. Man. It, I mean, I've never... Felt that close to spiritual thing, but I say that dream right there. That was the. That's the closest thing I've ever been to some type of spiritual spirits. You know, the people that you saw in your dream did you happen to the people that you said they were talking to you, like they were your best friends. Yeah. Did you happen to see them at some other point after you woke up? I mean, maybe like on television or something. I there were a couple of people who were a part of my family. You know who I've seen, but you know I've probably seen them later or something. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of people who were just like I had no idea who they were. But when I was in the dream, I was talking to them like I knew them my whole entire life. And these were just random people. Just like to me, they might be random. I mean, if I if I try to really, it's hard to see their faces. Right, right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, you know, I they felt really close to me. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not like it was just some random guy in the street. Right. You know, a hobo coming up. Oh, Barack Obama died. Huh? 
it was just like you know somebody close to me you know and they were in the house with me too mm-hmm. so it was, it was it was eerie it was eerie i woke up kind of yeah man you got me shit i don't want to go to sleep i'm <laughs> thinking of freddy krueger now so what about you lou i don't have too many horror movie stories because i'm not into horror movies but but I mean, just the, just the connection with the spiritual. Yeah, with spiritual, um, my understanding is that a lot of times they come to you in dreams, like you said. Um, I remember a very vivid dream right after my father passed away. You know, it was almost like, you know, his way of saying goodbye, you okay. know. Uh, so, I mean, and, and I understand that they do come to you in your dreams mm-hmm. in order to, you know, to make it easier and to... Right. You know to you know to kind of explain what what's going on okay. um you know i had i had a couple of very vivid dreams one which was you know he he had been missing for some time and then all of a sudden he kind of showed up and it was just like you know where have you been you know and he really didn't have an answer and i was like oh okay i understand now you know like he didn't want to say but you know he comes to me very very you know very rarely but uh, he does come to me, you know, he does come to me in dreams. Uh, I also had one very weird dream, which came to mind when Vinny was talking about his uh, dream was, uh, I remember being in my old uh, apartment uh, back in the Bronx when I was a child and um, uh, somehow the room, the bedroom that I was in, uh, I was younger again and I was in my old bedroom and all of a sudden a face came out of the wall now I wasn't afraid that was the weird thing about it yeah. like this face came out of the wall and it was a woman's that, face that, that would freak me out yeah it would, I, I would normally freak me out too <laughs> yeah. but in the dream I didn't freak out you know the lights in the room wouldn't turn on so it was almost like you know it was like I was in the dark this face pops out and I'm like who is this and you know my curiosity comes up and she starts talking to me and she tells me that she's a relative of mine but she's from the 19th century so oh I'm sorry yeah the 19th century she 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 was alive during the 1800s so I you know of course would have no sense of her I can't recall what her name was but we had a, a long conversation it was the weirdest thing I'm talking to this face in the wall and uh, like I said, and like you said, I would absolutely freak out, jump out the window <laughs> in a normal sense. And it didn't even scare me. Uh, I woke up normal the next day like, wow, it, I really felt like I met some, I met a family member that I'd never known of before. But, uh, you know, and ever since then, you know, I've, I've, I've kind of wondered. That's, that's why I'm very interested in the ancestry and everything, because I want to find out more about my, you know, my family, which is you know difficult to they're difficult to pin down so you know uh, that yeah that's and I have a lot of senses of about ghosts and everything about you know the whole idea of um, that ghosts are just spirits who are you know left behind who don't know that they're dead or don't know that don't know to go to the light don't want to leave maybe you have a, a mother who left her children behind and she's afraid to leave them. I understand. Uh, well, your your grandmother, my mother, has has the ability of sight. She really? she can see them. And um, for the longest time, she used to go. She used to go to the spiritualist, and I never knew where she went. And uh-huh. it was just like, where are you going? Yeah. And she was like, oh, we went to see this lady. La 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 la. And then you know, after I had gotten more into the spiritualism, she, you know, she confided in me that that's what she did. And a lot of the spiritualists, you know, are often like, what are you doing here? Okay, because you don't need me. Right. Because you already see. You already see. You just have to accept it. Right. Because from when she was a young girl, when her when her grandmother died, her grandmother came to her that night that she died. And she sat down at the bed with her and explained to her what happened. And, you know, they had a nice little conversation. And she said, you know, I'll see you whenever. And, you know, she took off. So she's always had that, you know, she hears my father all the time, she, uh, you know, she's able to, and it's a very matter of fact thing, but when she found out that I had been studying it, you know, she thought I'd be afraid of it, because my father was deathly afraid of it. Um, when she heard that I was into it, she was pleasantly surprised, you know, like, wow, 
you know, I, I, uh, I'm fascinated by it. But again, it isn't a horror movie type head. It's more like trying to figure out what is going on with this spirit. What happened to this soul? You know how? You know, they need to go to heaven. They need to go to God. You know, so that's the whole thing with me. You know, that's, that's crazy, man. But I think what you're saying have a lot of truth to it because uh, for me. I've had an out of body experience, it's not necessarily a ghost or anything, but mm -hmm. I've actually felt like I was looking at myself levitating. Mm -hmm. Like I felt like I was levitating. I act, and that, it's happened more than once. It'd be real late at night and I would wake up and, you know, I don't know what it was, but to me I felt like I was above, I wasn't sitting or standing on anything. Right. I was levitating and I could look around the room and I would not be touching anything. Mm -hmm. And I was awoke. Right. And then it was like, when I would focus hard enough, it was like I would come back into my body. It was like I would, I would actually, then I would be laying on the bed. Right. But if I would not interrupt what was going on, I really, I felt like I was levitating for whatever reason. Did you be able to see your own self? Yes. Yeah. Like I was, like my body was just there. Yeah. And I was, like I could look around the room and I could see me above everything. Mm -hmm. And it was an odd feeling because it happened more than once. And the first time I got scared, so it brought me back into my neck. Boom, right back into your body. But, yeah. the, but by the third, because it happened about three times. Mm -hmm. And I would say between the ages of like 11 and 16. Right. So it happened at some pretty older ages. And I think like the last time it happened, I just tried to like stay there. I tried to like really, like what, what am I feeling? Right. What's happening right now? And I was just kind of, I just remember myself looking around the room. And I could see my brother laying in his bed asleep. Because mm -hmm. at that time, me and my two brothers, we shared a room. We were in bunk beds. And I was always on the top bunk. Right. So like I could look around the room and I see the TV in the corner. I see my brother in his bed sound asleep. Mm -hmm. I look at the door. I look at the closet. And then once I focused, I'd be right back in the bed. And it really, like I really thought about it. I really sat and like, what did, what just happened? Am I tripping? This is way before drinking and smoking. <laughs> right. Um, so I'm serious. I'm questioning it. Like, what what is this? Right. And I mean, I've had other experiences. Like my my, my uncle that I was the closest to, my uncle Freddie. He passed my uh, my freshman year in college. As soon as I came down here to Georgia, right. it was after a football game. I think we got our ass kicked by uh, Tuskegee. And the very next night, I got a call. Well, I'm sorry, the very next morning, I got a call. And my cousin called me screaming and she couldn't even talk. She just kept screaming and said, he's dead, he's dead. And it took about five minutes to tell me who. And the whole time I was thinking my grandfather, because he was older. But it was actually my uncle. And this is the uncle I was closest to. This is the uncle everybody say I look like and I act like. He was the glue to the family. He was the funny man, my Uncle Freddie. Right. And he had passed and that blew my top, man. And I went back and I sang at his funeral. And I had this, this such a calm over me, like he was guiding me. Like you gotta be strong for the family type of deal. Right. And then even when I went back to school, there was certain times when I felt like he was literally watching over me. Right. I felt like I could I could close my eyes and I could have a conversation with him. Right. Like I could hear what he would say. Oh yeah. Or what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And and it was very comforting. Yeah. It almost was, for me it was like a part of the grieving process. It helped me deal with things. Cause this right. is the uncle I was the closest to. Right. They used to call me Little Freddie when I was younger. Cause I I look and act just like him. He was a heavier guy. Mm. He sang. He got me in the scene. He was he was very popular in our hometown. Everybody loved my uncle Freddie. Yeah. Those are usually the ones that seem to go first. Like they always say, the good you know, good die young. You yeah. Know. He he was thirty six. Yeah. Oh, that's young. Yeah, that's young. Right. What did he? What did he pass from? He, my grandma didn't want to get an autopsy, but he was he was very overweight. Okay. And he was on a lot of medication. I see. And a lot of things. And my aunt Tammy actually found him. He was. She said the night before they were. He was on the computer. Mm -hmm. And he was. He told her, "I love you." And mm -hmm. the next morning, she found him laying next to the computer with his hand over his head, like he was sleeping. Right. And he was gone. Hmm. And and it was it it it, it, it did a number on my family. Yeah. My grandma, I think the first thing she said when my aunt called her was, somebody's playing a trick on me. They just told me Freddie is dead. Right. And it was hard for them to accept it. And they actually went to the house and seen them pulling the body out. And it was yeah. It was ugly. Yeah. So I come home. Like, it happened, like, on a Thursday. I came home that Friday. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got all my cousins out of the house. And we went to our, you know, local high school football game mm -hmm. on that Friday night. So we went there. And, you know, everybody like, oh, Scott, what you doing in town? Ain't y'all in football season? And I'm like, yeah. And that week. I can't remember who we played, but I missed that game. That was the only game I missed all season, but, you know, rightfully so. We lost anyway. So, right. Uh, yeah, that's... It was, it, was, it was a crazy experience, man. And I even think back to when I was younger. Like, for a person who loves scary movies, I started out extremely horrified. 
I had this reoccurring nightmare, and I know you guys are gonna laugh when I'm dead serious. I had a reoccurring nightmare about Michael Jackson, the Thriller. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that scared the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. And in my dream, but it was another level. In my dream, we had this local skating rink called Edgy, huge skating rink. In my dream, I, and it, I had the same dream like four or five times. And I was at Edgy skating. It's like the biggest party, and everybody's having a good time. And then these three Michael Jacksons come through the wall, and they want to kill me. And it was just like, it was a tall one, it was a fat one, and it was the regular killer Michael Jackson. And he was the strongest one, but he had like a team with him. And they were chasing me throughout my dream. So I'm skating, and they just come through the wall, like on some movie shit, like, pew, and they were just pointing at me. So I'm on the skates, and I'm just like, I'm out of here. And I see people getting bit and killed, and they just trying to fight through people to get me. So I'm going down the fucking street and skates, and it's like I'm, I'm constantly running in my dreams. Then I get to a point where I get stuck. You know, at a point in your dream you can't move, right? And you're screaming, and you're like, "Ah, oh, shit!" And it's like something's holding you. And it's like every time they would get up on me, and I would wake up mm. crying and shit. But you wouldn't die. It would before they got to you. You'd I wake, would wake up. up. Yeah. Right. I never got to go through the process of being killed. Right. Like they got close enough, just like in the in the video. Right. And he got up on the girl, and his eyes changed. It was yeah. similar to that. Right. That they would get up on me, and I'm like, "Yeah," and I would wake up. Right. Sweating and all. <laughs> And I was running my mom's room. But the thing was, whenever the video came on, I had to watch it. <laughs> I, was, I was scared of it, but I had to watch it. And I think my fear was what made me love horror. Right. Because I had never had that feeling before right. of being so afraid of something. Yeah. Because outside of that shit, I, I was fearless. Right. Man, let me tell you, it took me years to get over that. Mm -mm. It took me years to get over <laughs> Michael Jackson thriller, man. And that's, that's a, one of his great videos. You right. Know, but that shit scared the shit out of me. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thriller didn't do it. Didn't scare me. I was. But well, you were old. I was an older. I was already. I was already a dad by then. But <laughs> I was. I, 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 I was. I was more interested in Ola Ray myself. Oh yeah. yeah. She was beautiful. Oh yeah, she's hot. She was very beautiful. She's hot. But yeah, it always it always begs you to question like what what is all out there? Cause we don't know. No, we don't know. I mean, from the ghosts and the goblins to the aliens, you don't know. Like when you think about places like Transylvania. Like, are there really vampires? Like, seriously, because I think there are vampires. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a really interesting history story, you know? About, right. Yeah, it's like, you know, people really actually thought that this man, Vladimir Paler, was Dracula. Yeah. You know? That's what it was based on. Yeah, based off of that. Right, that's what I'm saying, but I believe there's some truth to it. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, no doubt, man. I mean, you hear this, the Abraham Lincoln vampire hunter. I think, <laughs> I mean, throughout history, listen, throughout history, no matter what, there have always been accounts of... Yeah. Some type of ghoulish demons, goblins. Even even the Greeks had uh, the underworld, the yeah. Hades. Yeah, right. The, you know the monsters that were in the. Oh yeah. In, in the underworld. Yeah, there's something to it. There's, there there is an evil in the world for sure, and uh, it's interesting how people interpret it and how people react to it because, and unfortunately, these horror movies. You know, for me, it. A lot of people base their whole knowledge on these horror movies, and yeah. they're they're entertainment people. They're they're made for profit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not real stuff, you know. I mean, they they make up a whole lot of stuff that. Well, well I think some of the like, well, I could say one. Thing. Some of it, I think, like is based exorcism. on truth. Like the exorcism. Oh, oh yeah, the exorcist. Like that, yeah. Like uh, uh, that 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 freaks me out because I can. Did y'all see the exorcism of Emily Rose? That's the, the, the recent one. Yeah, I mean, the old one was great. Yeah, yeah. But that That's Emily Rose. Was based off the true story, the exorcist. Yeah, exorcist. that Emily Rose, it, scared, it didn't scare me, but it scared a lot of people. I remember my little brother and his friends were watching it, and they ended up cutting it off. Mm -hmm. They couldn't do it. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't. And it's it. funny how a movie mm -hmm. can really make it. Can really do that, yeah. Yeah, you know what scared me? Scarface. Scarface scared the daylight. Why is Scarface? I came out of Scarface so paranoid. <laughs> you thought you were going to get shot? I thought, I, I thought everybody was going to shoot me. <laughs> And and, and, and and I would have thought that it was just me, uh -huh. but my friend, I went with my friend Carlos, yeah. shout out to Carlos, and uh, he was scared too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I mean, you know, we were like, you know, uh, where did this Scarface come out? Like Scarface is like, what, 80s. late 80s? Yeah, late 80s. You know, we're, we're like in our 20s. <laughs> you know, we're not little kids, that you know. Funny, funny. And I mean, it was like, I was, I, I shouldn't say scared, I was paranoid. Yeah. I was paranoid. I felt like... Everybody had the ability to kill me at any moment. Any moment. You were just a movie. You know, I was just like, yeah, that that scared me. <laughs> so what about you, Wolf? Is there any movies that you just couldn't do it? No. You're not scared of any movies? Not a movie. I 
topic I was trying to really get onto was nothing funny, nothing scarface. The idea of this discussion today for me was to basically say, you stepped on it, briefly, Mr. Long, I'll piggyback off what you said. There is evil out there, there are things out there, and now, of all the things that we've become desensitized to, uh -huh. sex, violence, all these things, the one thing no one really talks about are supernatural things. Look at all the new the hit shows these days. Ghost Hunters, paranormal, you know, paranormal stage. Well, I don't consider, consider that scary. I mean, not that, I'm not saying that they're scary. Yeah. But these are shows about people going around trying to investigate the paranormal. So you think that's all fake? Whether it is or is not, that's something you're not supposed to play with. Right. So what, yeah. I mean, what, what gets under your skin? As far as scaring goes? Yeah. I don't. But, I really don't. I mean, that's not like that really scares me because I know to stay clear away from it. There are some things with no matter what religion you are. Bottom line is there are certain things you're not supposed to be here. Topics as far as Say, for instance, these glasses, you brought them from a garage sale, just for example. Mm -hmm. The person who owned those glasses, you don't know what they were into. Mm -hmm. Whatever they do attaches themselves to these items. There have been situations where people have gotten things from the will, from people who donated them. The family who owned them previously were into the dark arts, we'll call them. When the actual little girl put on the stockings, put them on, her legs couldn't stop moving. They'd keep kicking. They had to hold her arms to get them off. These are things that you don't play with. Everything we do, if you think about it, that we're taught from younger days, even now, from prayer to the rehearsed prayers, you now I lay me down to sleep, I love myself to keep. From sneezing, saying, bless you. Why do you say bless you? People need to think that your heart or your soul would exactly. come out. Little things like that are all to keep us protected from evil spirits. So you think that uh, there are evil spirits and they really can run red? I, I know that. I believe there are. I, I truly do. They work at our job. <laughs> there you go. Uh, honestly, I mean, Hey, I, I no, nah, that's real. They do work at our job. <laughs> they really do. Seriously, there's a lot of evil spirits in that story. I mean, but seriously, that's serious. No, that's I mean, serious. I, I tell, I tell serious. customers who say when I tell them some of the stories that go on in that place, and they say, "Oh my God!" I my favorite response is, "God has nothing to do with this place." No. Well, I, I know you told me that that people who did work at your store, you know, they they have people have come into the morbid. Uh, occurrences. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. We've had people die at our store. I mean, I feel like if anything, if anywhere where it happens, where death, you know, it mm -hmm. happens in an area, yeah. like uh, I even think, uh, look at the World Trade Center. I think that place, oh, yeah. I think that there they really may be a lot of spirits, you know, in that, in that uh, mm -hmm. area. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. so many people died, there mm -hmm. was a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, of course. If uh, I, I don't know, I'm not a I'm not a spiritualist or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not somebody studying these things. But I would think that that's where you know most of spirits would or evil spirits or you know angry spirits would come from. You know mm -hmm. stuff that happened to them and they didn't feel or they're stuck in in between or purgatory. Or right. You call it. Mm -hmm. The idea of spirits now. You have to ask yourself: Is it a spirit or something else? We, no. we truly never know. It, exactly. That's just... Well, all this is really based upon faith. Right. You know, if there's one thing, even if you're atheist, there's one thing you have to agree on that evil does exist. And it's not tangible, it's not visible. It's there. It's like uh, you and I was talking before, Mr. Scott. A lot of these shows now, they have... Even research, they talk about different types of hauntings. Residual and intelligent. Basically, meaning residual is basically someone who's died, and they just replay that particular moment over and over. And intelligent is basically something that knows what it is, knows who's around you, and knows what it can do, and it thinks just like the one out. Those are mostly the ones that are pretty considered demons. 
But what bothers me is the fact that haunted houses and things of that nature have almost become people want to run inside. Crap happens. Bad things. I mean, there's nothing cool about that. Why would why would someone want to go and mess with something like that? I think people people have this uh, they have this this feeling that they can conquer things. You know, I mean, this, this is throughout history. Yeah. You know, people always feel that if there is something, they can go up to it and face it head on. And I think, you know, people who dabble in the dark arts, they, those are the people who are, I'll say they have the biggest cojones, you know, just about in, in the world, because that's something I don't think I can, I, I, I have the heart to uh, confront. You know, you're talking about the dark and, and the, the Satan. Satanic, you know, satanic things. Well, that's one thing I won't mess with. One thing that has always scared me is a Ouija board. I definitely believe in the realness of a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. People well, what, using what, what them. Do you mean, a, Ouija a Ouija board, like you can contact the spirit and it will control your, your oh, emotions to where you. Yeah, okay. man, that thing scares me. I remember one of my friends had one. And I was like, you better get that away from me. That's one thing. Like that, that crosses the line. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I really feel like that's a contact. Yeah, like you're asking for it. You're asking. For you're it. asking for it. Like you know, right. you, they're asking questions like, mm -hmm. "Who are you?" Like, sure, I'm good. So, uh, w would you go to a séance? No. <laughs> no. See, now, now you're talking. No. <laughs> these, these, these are the things I was waiting for you to bring up. Well, we knew where you were I trying mean, to go. You know. Just, well, I mean, I mean, I, I'm glad. I'm glad to hear it because you said the key word, basically. Almost inviting yourself. There are a lot of, a lot of, like I said, a lot of little things we do that we're taught to do that we don't realize what it's meant to be. You've heard the old saying: If you don't have anything nice to say, you don't say it. If it's not nice, don't say it. There's a strong background to that. An angel nor a demon can read your mind. Only, only God can. Whatever you believe. If you say a bad thing, that's what a demon works with to get you to do things. Right. That's why all these little sayings, all these little things are done to protect us. A demon can't just really jump inside you but for whatever reason. It has to be invited. It has to be invited. And like you said, Ouija board, you know exactly what it is. Yeah, I'm good. You say, you know, <laughs> talk to me, talk to me. Yeah. Now, whether you're talking to a dead person or not, bottom line is, there's someone else in there with you. Yeah. moving that nonsense around and because you invite it with you it's wherever you go someone walks in here they can walk in here and leave it here mm -hmm. as they leave right no way and this is nonsense that people don't think about taking for granted and yeah it's been it's a cool thing now but it happens and people get seriously hurt but you don't hear about those anymore like you used to. People used to, people used to try them, and, and you don't hear about it that much anymore because I think it was a lot of bad experiences. It's almost like your curse. Well, I mean, like I, I know in history, they people they made these uh, fables and these fairy tales for a reason. Mm -hmm. You know, so you people so people make sure that they don't mess with this uh, idea or mess with this. You know, some things are taboo. Mm -hmm. You know. You remember? I'm not, I'm not sure if it's well, this was in New York. You should be able to get Ouija boards in um, Toys R Us, the toy station. No way. Yeah. 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 yeah, you used to get them in, yeah, you used to be able to go to a toy store and get them. They stopped that crap. Yeah, they used to be with the board games, like yeah. everything else. No way. People got hurt. Because I never knew you got them at where I was from. I just knew a few people who had them. And I was like, yo, if you bring that to my house, you are, you're not getting through the door. I remember the commercials. They go, you're moving. No, you're yeah. moving. It. Yeah, there were they, commercials for it. It was a kid's it. game. It was a game. Setting people up. Yeah, it was the, yeah, a lot of, but then again, they also had cigarette commercials then, so. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just like spells and, and, and chants and curses, stuff like that is another thing. Like, you know how they had these old books with all these spells and stuff in it, and how to put roots on people and stuff of that nature? I'm good. Well, we can thank Harry Potter and the, the Twilights for making those things uh, popular, you know, because, you know, usually a witch would be, you know, which was something that nobody wanted to, mm -hmm. to deal with. It was something that was dark and, mm -hmm. you know, and should have been shunned. But now it's like, you're a witch, you're Harry Potter, you know? 
Well, you know, they try to cover it up and they try to put a good storyline behind it. And they, they hide it. But I know, like, my aunt, like, when she was coming up, she wouldn't let my cousin watch any stuff like that. She didn't even like him really watching The Simpsons, honestly. Yeah. She was like, uh-uh, I don't want that demonic spirit in my house. And she was serious. Yeah. She was dead serious. Yeah. Some people don't want to mess with that stuff. Uh, I think a lot of it is, a lot a, a lot of people get hurt because there's no balance. They, 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 they don't, all they, they want to try to tackle this stuff, like you said, Vinny, that they try to confront this with their minds and there's spirituality involved in this and since quite frankly nobody goes to church anymore uh a lot of people don't know about the other side as far as you know there's evil and there's good right and you have to have that balance to be able to understand like okay yeah there's evil you know i mean and i I realize that there's evil but being a, a catholic brought up in a catholic church and you know, I, I feel I feel Jesus's presence around me, so I feel protected from it. Right. So I and plus I don't invite it. Yeah. I don't ask for it. So you know, it's, it it doesn't you know matter to me. That's why horror movies I don't find interesting at all. I grew up in the South Bronx. I just had to look out my window if I wanted to see a horror movie. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> so Right, that, that, that silence, because it's just, I'm sure everybody having a flurry of thoughts right now, you know what I mean? Like, when you really start to delve into this stuff, and you try to separate what you believe versus the truth, Right. that thought in itself is frightening. Yeah. Because the line is, is... Yeah, and they don't know the difference, because, I mean, quite frankly, a family member could be around you, and just being around you, because they're looking after you, they're protecting you, but if someone doesn't know any better... No, they go, oh, somebody's trying to, a demon is trying to take over me. Right. You know, and, and like I tell my, my, my wife, I'm like, all your family members are here. Mm-hmm. You know, they're all looking after you. Yeah. You know, they're not very far away and they're protecting you. So uh, you, you don't have to, you don't have to be afraid of it. You know, they're not going, they're, they're not purposely going to come and scare you. If they know that you're not going, like I said, if they know that you can't handle it, you know, my mother can handle it. You know, they'll just walk in and talk to her. You know, but um, you and I, they'll come to us in dreams. And they'll they'll send messages that way. Well, see, it's a big thing. Your mother has accepted it. Oh, yeah. She she, she has a uh, power, clearly, right. that she um, she understands her gift. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people, the confusion itself scares them. Yeah. The, it's the not knowing that's the scariest thing. Oh, yeah. That's the scariest part. Mm-hmm. And when you have a certain calm, where you have a certain understanding about something, you know, it's easier to deal with. It's easier to be more comfortable. Yeah. You know. Well, that's. I was reading an article about Sylvia Brown, who, go, who comes on Montel's show a lot, and I love to watch her on the show. Uh-huh. And she, they were asking her when she found out about her gift. Right. She said she was about five, and she saw she she saw she could predict what was going to happen to people and so she knew that her her two great grandmothers were going to die and within two weeks they both died and it would have been difficult but you see she had other family members who also had that gift and her family had had it for according to her over for 300 years Mm. so her mother her grandmother had the gift also so uh it, it was easier that way, but that's that's kind of tough for a five-year-old to be able. And I understand the way she sees it. Uh, from what I was reading in one of her books, was it literally is like, you know, that scene from Indiana Jones where you know they open up the covenant and you know their faces melt. She sees people's faces melt, and she knows that they're going to die. Mm. And so that's that's how she, from my understanding, from what I read, wow, that's, that's, that that's deep. <laughs> it's a hell of a it's a hell of a power, you know. A a thought. And you know, for a very long time, she you know, she pushed away from it. But you really can't. You have to embrace it. You have to embrace it in order to. First of all, you have it because you it's there to help people. You know, not necessarily to tell them they're going to die, but to let them know that you know. What what is the possibilities are? Right. That's interesting, man. I mean, 
you know, we're pretty much almost at time, so we're going to wrap it up. But, you know, people should think about it. It's something, it's something that people don't talk about, so you don't think about it. It's not, it's not as Wolf was alluding to earlier, it's not taken as seriously because I think at this point in our society, it's not even brought up. And like when you got shows like Ghost Hunters and stuff like that, right. it, it, it adds a, 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 com a comedy element to it. Right. And it, it kind of takes the fear away for a lot of people, but it's real, man. Yeah. It goes back hundreds of thousands of years. Oh yes, it's it's tough. I can't I can't take those shows seriously. You know, you see them, you know, with their little uh, their little uh, machines and whatever, trying to go into the house. Like, oh, did you hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah. And it just sounds like wind. And right. Like, you hear that? He says, "Fuck it." Yeah. Oh, he's talking to us. No, yeah. I, he, he, it's, very, it's very overdone. It's very overdone. It's very, very overdone. dramatic for no reason, and it's hard to believe. You know what I'm saying? But like, if somebody like Sylvia Brown, who you know, my dad introduced me to her. Mm -hmm. You know. I've taken a look at some of the stuff he's talking about. You know, it's, it's stuff that's more spiritual instead of factual. You know, you can't put science into these things. No. Oh, no. Science has nothing to do with it. And that's the problem a lot of people have is that it's not tangible. It's not something you can, you can touch. It's something that you sense. It's something that you feel. And unfortunately, a lot of people dismiss it because it isn't, you know, in front of them, you know, something they can touch. Right. You know, but you can, like... Like Scott was saying, he can feel his uncle around him. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, he feels him. So, to an extent, he has that. Yeah, and we all have that gift to right. be able to. It's just how far do, are we willing to go? Right. You know, because right. your, you know, in your brain has the ability to go there and actually like talk to them physically. Mm -hmm. I, I actually have a, I actually have a question for, for all of you. Because mm -hmm. um, you know, I've watched shows. You know, I've played games. And they all talk about the darkness. Mm -hmm. They all talk about, you know, what's going there. You know, people who fall into the darkness. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's a possibility that a, a human being in our world can, if they dabble deep enough in the dark arts, can actually embody darkness within themselves as in, like, they can harbor these demons. They can, they can control uh, the spirits. Not, you know, uh, but evil spirits. I mean, is it, you think there's a way that people can control evil in the tangible world, in the human world? I don't think it could be possible at all. I think the exact opposite of that, because if you think about it, the idea of the actual demon is basically just an angel from different parts of the story saying that they don't like us because we are God's chosen children. So the idea of a human controlling a demon see possible I can see the demon the human opening himself up foolishly for the demon to enter and set up the demon takes control the demon takes many demons even yeah. will take control of him and do their nonsense yeah. within the within mm -hmm. well I contend to a certain extent that we have the demons in us already that we have goodness in us and we have evil in us I mean you'll hear about the guy who has been a nice guy oh he was a very good neighbor but he killed everybody in the house yeah you know, uh, I think we all have that ability to go there, to be able to, you know, to go to a dark side. And it's just a question of, are we, you know, how far are you willing to go? Like I said, are you willing to do something bad to someone? And can you handle that? Can you, can you live with yourself? And a lot of people, like I said, I had, I had a coworker who, one day he's working with us and everything was fine and then he's in the paper the next day murder suicide he killed his baby mama he killed her her best friend and he killed himself uh he was a very nice guy he seemed he seemed a little bit sad uh due to his circumstances but it it certainly didn't seem like he'd be somebody who would take it to that level uh -huh. but i believe we all can take it to that level right and that evil is in us. It's it, I think it's innate in our in our essence. So I you know, it's just a question of whether you want to tap into that and are you willing to how much can you control it? Can you stop it? I don't believe that if you're a strong enough person that an outside demon can just come into you. That that stuff is nonsense. I believe it's already in you. I believe you already have that ability. Anybody who's driven on I-85 during rush hour knows that people have the ability to be evil yeah. at any moment of the day. Yeah. You've had people shoot people in traffic. In traffic. They get road rage and they shoot somebody. Over switching lanes. 
And I, I think, I think to piggyback what off you said, Louis, it, it, it starts here. It starts mentally. Yeah. It starts with your thoughts mm-hmm. and the things you think and the places you take yourself mentally. And as far as depression, anger, sadness, remorse, regret, those those kind of open the door. Mm-hmm. And then as you delve deeper and you start to harbor on those feelings and they get stronger, that's where the demons manifest themselves. So. Right. They, they play off of those. And right. then the board we were talking about, I just think about stuff like that's relevant today, like the whole thing about the Illuminati. Yeah. They bring that up a lot. And I definitely think that's real. You know, uh, this, this group of people who have, who have submitted themselves to evil for, for, and to trade for success or to trade for this right. or for that. And then I was actually reading something online. They were talking about a popular groups now. The, the symbols that they wear and the logos and the things that they're constantly promoting we don't even realize because of the media right you just think it's a design you just think it's a, a cute logo but then you look at the logo and you pull it up online and it's like oh back in the day this meant that you worshiped satan like, right it, it was a couple guys man like uh asap rock he has a logo that he wears in all his videos and uh they even had the one fire state jay-z and kanye Certain the, the the signs that they throw up and the Rockefeller sign, all that stuff. If you look it up in, in history and you look that stuff up, man. Look at the American currency. You know, yeah. You got stuff on the American. The currency. dollar bill. Yeah. The dollar bill. Take a look at the dollar bill. Everybody on the back, you got the CNI. Oh, yeah. CNI. You yeah. Know, that's, it's it's. Well, uh, you know, Hard Rock has a whole lot of uh, demonic references. Yeah. You know, Black Sabbath and mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I know Voodoo Child, like the, like the Voodoo, you know, Voodoo thing. Like, sure. Those mm-hmm. other things I can. I, I, yeah. Touch with the I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> and then, like, you know, at a certain point, like probably about 10, 15 years ago, where certain records that you could play backwards, and it was like a demonic chant. Right. Yeah. And, you know, the stuff like that. People, Like I said, people brush it under the rug. Yeah. Because out of sight, out of mind. Mm-hmm. But the more you dig, oh, yeah. The more them question marks, like, yeah. Wait a minute. Well, so that's what Stevie Wonder said. You believe in things that you don't understand, then you suffer. Uh huh. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah. <laughs> that's real. So I, I definitely believe, like like Lou said, it's there. It just it's a choice, right? It's a choice. And I think if you have faith, if you have if you have a strong faith in God, and you you know you've uh, you've accepted that into your life, then you're pretty much protected from it. At least I feel I am. Well, I think some people don't 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 really, you know. I mean, I can I can see somebody who hasn't gone to church, you know, who feels that oh they don't have the faith, but you know, I don't think faith is about going to church. No. Oh well, no, it has nothing to do with church. It has everything to do with it. Yeah. It's good, you know, to go. But to you, I, I believe that you learn within that environment. You learn about faith. You, you, but and if you haven't been exposed to that, then you can get lost and feel that hopelessness. And there's been times when I felt hopeless and I felt depressed. And I've had doctors ask me, "Well, do you feel like doing yourself in?" I'm like, "Oh heck no." I'm like, "That's never come up." You know, as far as doing myself in, I felt hopeless, but. I always have that faith to go back to and I know that oh, okay I have to hit rock bottom and then I just bounce back up just make sure you're facing up so you know which way you're headed mm-hmm. yeah man that's, that's deep Wolf any, any last thoughts final thoughts we're gonna wrap this thing up man final thought I just uh, really, basically what you said I wish, I wish we'd t- touch on it earlier all the symbols that are out there do your research like you said a lot of these a lot of these symbols and logos you see honestly naturally they look strange yeah like, really, like you said they all see in your eye that always creepy like, mm-hmm. why that would be my last look, look look at all these things that you're tattooing on your arm all these things that you're even worshiping not that, that's quote unquote worshiping i'll say idolizing right look into them and find out exactly what they are it's all about research yeah, it's, it's definitely high power. Definitely things bigger than us. Yeah. Know? It's just like I said, I think at the end of the day, it all comes back full circle. It's a choice. Mm-hmm. It's a choice. You decide whether you, like you said, whether you want to dig deeper, whether you believe in a higher power, whether you believe in the better or the good, or you see evil. Mm-hmm. You know, because, I mean, just before we close, just even think of like people in prison. You know, some of the horrific things that they've done. It's like, what possessed you? Like you were saying, some people are regular people. They have a regular life. They was, he was a nice guy. And then all of a sudden he killed everybody in his family. And then when you, and then like they have interviews with these people in prison and they don't regret it. They just like, hey man, it happened. Mm-hmm. 
it's like stuff like that and really really makes you think like yeah you, you that, never really know that you're capable anyone is capable of that yeah and you have the people who you interview them they don't even remember that you know what I'm saying there's other forces that play that right absolutely well truth be told we, we tell the truth man we talk about it all there's not uh, a stern uh, excuse me not a stone that will go unturned we 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 dig in everything fellas and uh, that is definitely, if nothing else, food for thought. For everybody out there listening, you know, again, I'm going to always reference it. Check us out, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. And if you got any experience, any paranormal activity, any any type of thing that, that's dealing with this topic, we don't, leave a comment, man. We, we, we'll be more than glad to discuss it with you because we talk about things that pertain to everyone, everyday life, man. It's, this is a real part of it. People try to sweep it under the rug, but it doesn't mean that it's not here. Yeah, fellas, go ahead and sign off. I'm all set. Well, um, this Vinny, you know, uh, like, like what's said, read up on your history. You know, you need, it's best to educate yourself about these things. You know, don't sleep under the rug. You know, if the more you know, the better you'll be. I'll leave it at that. I almost fell down. Apparently, I have delved deep into things I should be. The Illuminati's trying to the, take you yes, out. Yes, apparently I, I've touched upon something I shouldn't have. I was going to add a little bright moment, and I think I'll continue with it. I'd like to also give my shout out to the clan. Because if anybody knows about evil and demons, it's you guys. Good luck on your road. I can't wait to drive down it. <laughs> um, this, is, this is Lou. I hope that everybody gets something out of it. I don't know exactly what, but we, you know, we try to speak about things that uh, we know a little bit about, some things we don't know anything about, and if you know, there's anything that you that you might have some uh, insight about that maybe we didn't talk about, or you know, maybe we weren't uh, we weren't accurate in on your you know in your opinion, then you know, please hit us up. We appreciate your feedback, and thanks for listening.